Welcome to the MySQL installation lesson. In this lesson, you'll learn how to download and install the MySQL database, upload a local file from your computer onto the MySQL database, query data stored on the MySQL database from the MySQL command line, and query data stored on the MySQL database from the Presto command line. In terms of versions, I use the MySQL 8.0.21 version. But honestly, I've installed and done this setup multiple times and I just use the latest version of the MySQL database. Up until now, I've not had any issue and I don't expect it to be an issue for you. However, feel free to use the 8.0.21 version. And with that, let's get started. First things first, open up a web browser and go to the www.mysql.com URL. Next, click on Downloads. Next, scroll down until you see the MySQL Community GPL download. Click on that. Click on MySQL Community Server. Scroll down to find the right image for your computer. Since I'm using a Mac, I'll click to download the DMG archive file. Skip the login and just click on No Thanks, just start my download. Once the download is complete, double click on the downloaded file to open it. Next, double click on the package file. Sometimes, when you double click on a file downloaded from the internet, you get a notification reminding you that it was downloaded from the web and that Apple cannot check it for malicious software. What I typically do if I trust that file, I go ahead and I use the open with option. Accept the defaults. When prompted, provide the password for your computer. Continue to accept the defaults. When you get to the Configure MySQL Server portion of the installation process, provide the password that you set up in the etc slash catalog slash mysql.properties file. If you recall, the password that we used was test test. T-E-S-T, T-E-S-T, -E -E one word. Again, we're prompted for the password for our computer. Provide that. And with that, the MySQL server has been installed. Let's check it out. If you go to the System Preferences, you should see the MySQL server icon there. Click on it and take a look. You can see that the version is 8.0.21. And you can also see that the MySQL server was automatically launched and started after the installation. Next. Let's go to the command line and update the bash underscore profile file. We want to add the path to the MySQL server installation. Let's first check the user slash local slash MySQL slash bin directory. Just make sure everything is there. Once that is done, copy that path, open up the bash underscore profile file, and paste that path in the bash underscore profile file. You have to issue the source command. With this, the changes we made to the bash underscore profile file will apply to this terminal window. Now let's go to the MySQL command line. Enter MySQL space dash u space root space dash p. You're going to be prompted for a password. Provide the password for your computer. This should now get you to the MySQL command line. Next, let's see the databases available to us. These are the databases that come by default when you install the MySQL server. So use the command show databases. Similar to what we've done in the past, let's use the information underscore schema database. Next, let's see the list of tables within that database. You can do this with a show tables command. Now select the table called tables and use the command select star from tables to show all its rows. Let's reduce the font so that we can see the outline of the table. Let's try limiting it to the first six rows. So we can see that we can query the MySQL server from the MySQL CLI or should I say command line. 
using the default data that came with the installation. If you recall from the problem statement at the beginning of this course, Hospital B used the MySQL database, while Hospital A used HDFS and Hospital C used Kafka. So why don't we just load up the data from Hospital B into this MySQL server. To do this, let's create a new database called hospital underscore B underscore PPE underscore data. Let's switch to it by using the use command. Next, let's create a table within this new database with the following headers ID, category, product, and number of units. Let's confirm that the table has been created by using the command show tables. I already have the file on my local computer. However, in order to load up the data into the new database I just created, I have to set the following variable. Enter the command set space global space local underscore in file and make that equal to one. Once this is done, you must exit and relaunch the MySQL command line. But this time, when you launch it, you use a slightly different syntax. At the command prompt, enter MySQL dash dash local dash in file and make that equal to one space dash u space root space dash p. Next, let's use some of the commands that we've used in the past. Show databases. Let's switch to it by using the use command. Show tables. Now try to do a select star from the table we created earlier. You see that it's empty. Let's populate this table with our local file. So we're essentially going to load our local file from our computer into this table. Let's confirm that the table now contains the contents of the file from our local computer. There you go. So we've essentially installed the MySQL server, created a database within it, created a new table within that database, filled that table with the contents of the file from our local computer, and queried the table from the MySQL command line. The next thing we want to do now is try to query this same table from the Presto command line. And to do that, you need to first kick off the Presto server. By now, we've done this several times, and so I'm just going to go quickly through this. Next, let's open up a new terminal and launch the Presto CLI. Once the CLI has been launched, enter Show Catalogs. Show schemas from MySQL. Show tables from mysql.hospital underscore b underscore ppe underscore data. Select star from mysql.hospital underscore b underscore ppe underscore data dot ppe underscore availability underscore hospital underscore b. And let's do a limit of 10. And with this, we are now able to query data in the MySQL database from Presto. Okay, let's have a recap of what we've just covered in this lesson. We've learned how to download and install the MySQL server. We've learned how to upload a local file onto the MySQL server. And we've learned how to query data stored on the MySQL server from both the MySQL CLI and the Presto CLI.